So I also want to thank you all for coming and practicing for two weeks. Not so easy, particularly if you've never done it before. So that takes, do it. Like he said, it's pretty boring, right? In fact, I was thinking about the, uh, the Buddha. Uh, the Buddha practices for six years. Some of that time is kind of interesting because he visits different teachers, right? So the first teacher might be kind of interesting. I don't know. They don't say much about them. And the second one, it'll be a change of pace. You know, it's like the second game. <laughs> and then, and then he goes and hangs around with these five ascetics. Uh, they aren't that interesting either. So in the end, he just has to go and sit underneath the tree. So we're in the same kind of spot. Like he said, what are you going to do? Right? So usually we're usually you're thinking in opposites thinking, like. I should stop my thinking and return to my true self. Right? So it's like two different things that you're fighting with, just like in the game. Right? But as soon as you get attached to these opposites, well, of course, that's just more things, just like in the game. You're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But it's not about that. Right? So everything in Zen is about finding your true self and helping the world. Everything. So it's kind of interesting to me, anyway, that uh, the Buddha has this big question. He sees old age, sickness, and death. We all see that. You might even get a glimpse of your own death if you cut your finger or something while you're pulling weeds. Or uh, you trip as you're going down to that other house that we rent down there. All kinds of things can tell you that this show is about over. Right? Actually, you don't know when the show is over. Right? It could easily be before this talk is over. Then what that does is bring up this great question of life and death. So the Buddha had a really nice life. Maybe not as good as living in New York City. But... Not bad. But then he sees old age, sickness, and death. When he goes out of his good situation, he wonders, oh, God. You know, I'm not going to be able to avoid this, so what am I? And we all have exactly the same thing. Everything about this kilche is about finding the answer to the great question of life and death. So he goes and sits underneath the tree. I mean, our, our tree is pretty cool here, actually. I kind of like it, but <laughs> the behind meaning is the same. Right? So whether you're sitting in a tree someplace in northern Bihar in India, or you're sitting here in Om Sari, it's the same. It's about looking inside and finding your true self. So the trick to that is to just do it. In Chinese, it's called Wu Wei. Uh, a Zen Master Sung Song is a really smart translator. I don't know where he got this one, but it's like world class. Uh, translated the Chinese phrase Wu Wei. What is it in, what is it in Korean? Non-action. Yeah. Not, uh, no, in Not, Korean. No, uh, Korean movie. Mu Wei. Yeah, movie. Uh, translated in English is just do it. So just do it is actually clearer than Wu Wei <laughs> or Mu Wei. <laughs> because right away, just do it. Wow, what? You know, you don't. Uh, what's the result? What, what leads up to it? Uh, where are we going? Uh, blah, 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 blah. But it says just do it. So uh, usually you think about uh, winning and losing, right? That's what gets people hooked in this game and the reason they can't figure out how to get to the key because they're attached to, I'm either going to do this or I'm going to fail and I'm not going to be able to do it. So they take 
they, they think they're on one of these two paths. You know, I am good and I'm going to do it, or I am bad and this is a waste of time, I'm failing. Right? But there's another way. And that's this Wu way, this is just do it. So when we come, the whole trick to doing it, just like the trick in the game, is to just do it. Then you get it. Thinking, 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 you just get a headache, right? Have you ever sat there and just think? You know, you get this, uh, what, what I call, I'm really clever, so I made up a really good name for this. It's called the existential headache. <laughs> so what that is, is you're sitting there thinking about winning and losing life and death, lunch or dinner, you know, you're <laughs> all the time, and then you get attached to this kind of thinking. So everything in Buddhism is about letting go of your attachment thinking. And then you return to what he called the wall is white and the floor is yellow. Right? So that doesn't have any attachment to it. So that's why we, and if you realize that for just a microsecond, just a nanosecond, just a, a billionth of a millionth of a second, at that point you get enlightenment. And we call that truth enlightenment. So the truth is the wall's white and the floor is yellow. So that's true if you're French, it's true if you're uh, from Israel, it's true even for a stupid American like me. The wall is white and the floor is yellow. So that's what the Buddha got. He got uh, morning star enlightenment, which is kind of ironic because it's not a star, it's a planet. So anyway, <laughs> he gets it, right, boom. But then he keeps sitting there. So that's a, that's a real problem. In fact, it's such a problem that this God up in heaven decides that his name is Chakra, that he has to come down and, help and do something about the Buddha. You know, it's kind of like he has to go to Queens and help him get over there on the, what is it, 59th Street Bridge to get over. <laughs> Right? He's got to help him. So he comes down and says, you can't just sit here. You actually have to get up and help people. But the Buddha doesn't recognize the God. The Buddha just keeps sitting there. The Buddha's tough. You know? And then finally, the God realizes that the Buddha has heard what he said and floats back up to heaven. So then the Buddha gets up. So that's the most important part. We call that correct situation, relationship, and function, enlightenment. Uh, but it was always interesting to me because a lot of forms of Buddhism don't talk about this getting up part. It's funny, like uh, two weeks ago we had Buddha's birthday, right? But if you were in Singapore, they didn't have Buddha's birthday. They had Visak Day, right? So Visak Day has three parts to it. It has the birth of the Buddha, which we celebrate here in Korea. Then it has the enlightenment of the Buddha, right? That's Enlightenment Day, which is in, what, in the 12th lunar month and in the, here. And in, in, um, in the United States, it's in December, December 8th. And then lastly is his death day, right? The day dies. So to me it was always interesting, there's these three things, but they leave out what's the most important one. It's the reason that the God floated down from heaven. The most important one is helping people, right? So we aren't here to look at the, I mean we are doing it, looking at the wall and the floor, but we have a big job, right? and that big job is to get up and help the world. So what I was going to propose to Prime Minister Lee in Singapore is that uh, Singapore have a brand new Buddhist holiday. I think this would be really good. 
And uh, uh, we call it get up day. <laughs> so get up, or in the United States we call it giddy up day. <laughs> so what, what happens then is the Buddha gets up to help the world. So that's get up day. That's the most important time, actually. But since it's always right now, get up day is moment to moment to moment in your life. So our original job is to let go of our like and dislike mind and help the world. So that's a get up day, okay? Try that sometime. That's our original <laughs> job is to help the world. So we're practicing. We're not practicing here to prove to somebody uh, uh, back in Australia that we're a really tough guy. Right? We're here to find our true self and help the world. So even if you're from the Czech Republic, your job is the same. Right? Your job is to find your true self and help the world. So it's not about proving anything, even to yourself. It's about finding your true self and then helping the world. So he thanked you for coming. I thank you. You can even thank yourself, because you're one of those su suffering beings, too. Thank God, I, thank God I came and started practicing, right? So it doesn't seem like much fun, and actually it isn't. Zen Master Sung Sung always said, the biggest hindrance is boredom. I don't know if you noticed, but a white wall and a yellow floor is not really that interesting. <laughs> so it's really... God, can't we get a better floor to look at? <laughs> <laughs> but every, every human being faces that. And we're just fortunate that we encountered this teaching and we have this beautiful place to practice and we can actually uh, do it. So most important is just do it. Then you get it. Thinking, 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 thinking. All you get is a headache, right? You've had one of the, that's the existential headache. <laughs> and everybody's had one, and you, have them, you can have them all the time, right? Doesn't take much effort. <laughs> just let go for a second. Come back to just now. Moment, 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 moment. So we call that a moment world. Because we do live in a moment world. So wake up to it and help. Thank you. Any questions this afternoon? Yeah. Now before that, you say about without intention, there will be have no result. Right. Yeah. I wonder what kind of result, which, I mean, like in our practice. Yeah, I have no idea. Zen Master Sung Sung always said, I only teach one thing, don't know. So we talk about that stuff, and we use Buddhist talk, or we use Zen talk. We can even use New York talk to talk about that. But that isn't, it's pointing towards something. Right? So you'll notice those great questions of life and death, they leave you speechless. Me, anyway. And they scare the hell out of you, too. Right? I just love old age. And sickness, boy, sickness is great. I love sickness. And who can beat death? <laughs> right? So those things are always point, pointing at, at something. But it, the... Uh, what they point to is this great question of life and death, and the great question of life and death is a before-thinking question. So, um, uh, I talked about this a couple weeks ago. There's two kinds of questions. There's, there's thinking questions and before-thinking questions. So if you want to get into town to buy vegetables or something, you know how to do it, right? And, and, And he can tell me for sure, because I, I went with him. So that's a, a kind of thinking question, 
right? And there's many, many of those. But then there's another kind of question that when you think about it, you just draw a blank, right? So that's a before thinking question. So old age thickness and death, uh, you know, they really don't have much to say, <laughs> but boy, they really, they really affect you because they're pointing at something, right? They're like your original teacher. So everybody for sure has those three teachers. Well, you might die before you get old. But other than that, <laughs> and you might be really healthy your whole life until you clunk, go dead. But for sure, those are pointing at something, a big lesson about what you really are. And then when you find what you really are, you use that to help the world. So yeah, that's, that's what we call don't know. That's what Zen Master called. There's a song song called Don't Know. In fact, he always said, I only teach don't know. Right? But that don't know takes many different forms. Sometimes it takes correct situation, relationship, and function. Sometimes it becomes great love, great compassion, the great bodhisattva way. Sometimes it becomes a great question. But that's, that's don't know. Uh, that's uh, before, before thinking. Now we mentioned there are before thinking questions and thinking yeah. questions. Right. Are there after thinking questions as well? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after thinking are a form of thinking questions. But none of them are any problem if you don't attach to them. Because you use that. You have an ability to think. I mean, you think a lot better than me. You can think in Russian and Korean and, and English. <laughs> yeah, so it's, a, it's about non-attachment and then using that non-attached mind to help the world. But that's just a name. It's, you know, we, we say it's infinite in time and space, so that's pretty cool. That covers a lot of territory, <laughs> infinite in time and space. You know, Christians and Jews and Muslims call it God. That's a nice word for it. I don't know, did you ever meet God? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> you know that, that story, I was with, we, were in, we were in Kentucky. Kentucky is this state in the middle of the United States, and it's, uh, it's uh, very Christian, you know. So we were in a restaurant, and the waiter knows that Zen Master Sung Sung is a Buddhist monk, obviously. Well, he probably doesn't know what a Buddhist monk is, but he's, he's got a really strong feeling that this guy is not a Christian. <laughs> and then we go to leave, and the, and the waiter stops him and says, do you believe in God? <laughs> do you believe in God? And Zen Master Sung Sung just looked at him and smiled and said, of course I believe in God. <laughs> And then he looks at the guy and says, by the way, did you ever meet God? <laughs> and the guy didn't know what to say. <laughs> so we just left. I don't know what happened to that guy. but <laughs> So that, that's about experience, right? So uh, a term like Buddha nature, that's cool, but what does it really mean? Or God, what does that really mean? Or true self? How many Hindu gods are there? Did you ever meet any of them? <laughs> right. So that's always going. That, that's our, our thinking attached mind. And there's no problem with it. Just don't attach to your attachment mind. That's all. It's all about letting go and then helping the world. It's pretty simple. I like Zen because you don't have to be very smart. Any other questions? Yep. <laughs> I mean, uh, is, is the, I mean, is, just like you say, it's like thinking. It's kind of like make us headache. I just wonder, do we use thinking in any way? Of course, you have to think. 
Thinking is not the problem, it's attachment to the thinking that's the problem. Mm -hmm. So like Kyung Ho's name that lived up here at Dong Hok Sa, you know, right over here about two miles. So uh, he's this big sutra master, so he knows all the sutras inside out. He's like 25 years old and teaches them, right? And then he goes to visit, I forget who he is. he's visiting somebody in Seoul, right? And then he passes by this little village on the way there, and there's all these dead bodies, these people who died from cholera, I think it's cholera, right? Died from cholera, right? And then, <laughs> then he gets this big question, you know, so... Um, Thinking about it isn't going to help him. And he's really smart. And he he's probably has memorized a lot of the sutras. It doesn't help him. So that's the situation that every human being is. The problem is you can know all that stuff and then you can think you know something. But that's different than actually doing it or experiencing it directly. So... Um, but there's nothing wrong with that. You just don't attach to it. So it can be useful sometimes. Of course. <laughs> yeah. It's very useful, actually. In fact, it's your attachment to old age, sickness, and death that gives you this really bad feeling inside your guts that makes you practice. Although its intent is to point towards something that you use to help all beings. But you're one of all beings, so there you go. <laughs> it's a win-win game. That's what I like about Buddhism, everybody wins. <laughs> Does that answer your question? Yeah. Any other question? Yeah? Uh, that's a big one. Just, just to uh, ask a question, because there are different Buddhism, uh, like right. different stages, like Theravada, Mahayana, then Zen. So can I say that Zen Buddhism is the last step? Because uh, after you know everything, then after that, you let go of everything. And just, then just do it. Instead, Instead of... Is it I would, stages, or you can just straight away go to Zen Buddhism? Right, I just call them different styles. I think that's a better word. But no matter what words you say, it's going to be wrong. Right. That's the way words are. So you have to perceive, you have the wisdom to know that that is the meaning of that. Right? So if I say, let's have kabachal for, for dinner, you know, and then everybody says, kabachal? We're going to have kabachal for dinner? Who knows how to make kabachal? <laughs> right? So if you attach to that word, you'll never know what it means. But once you experience kabachal and see how terrible it tastes, then you'll know. <laughs> I made that word up. <laughs> so it's like that, you know. In, in, in Zen, uh, we have a style that emphasizes experience, right? Rather than uh, uh, learning or memorizing text or something. Like Zen Master Sung Sung always said, oh, Tibetan Buddhism has too many words. Well, it doesn't have any more words than anybody else, <laughs> you know. But he, he's just saying something to make a dramatic point to push you in a particular direction, which is, Buddha solved that problem through experience, not through uh, learning some new stuff or something, right? So uh, that's a kind of style. So Zen happens to have that style. It's not special, but it's just a, a style. In fact, all religions are like, they all have a style, right? Judaism has a style. I was raised a Presbyterian that has a style, right? So that's going on all the time with everybody. In fact, uh, there's probably as many styles as there are human beings, if I understand how this works. So your understanding of God, my understanding of God, your understanding of Buddha, and my understanding of Buddha will be slightly different. But I, w I wasn't raised in Buddhist culture. So those, are, I like to think of them as styles. So those styles point at something. So if you want to get something done, there's different ways of doing it, and those different ways are just different styles. 
And you might evaluate them as being more effective or something, but that's your style. Any other questions? So thank you for listening. Most important is just do it, right? Whatever it is, moment to moment to moment, just do it. Then you get it, thinking, right? You know about that, right? <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> thank you.